Ms. Scott, is the defendant Daniel Groves prepared at following to offer his case? We are, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Stratton, you may call your first witness. Your Honor, we call Jessica Groves to the stand. And if you'll step forward. And will you raise your right hand for me, please? And will you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Please have a seat. Jessica, please state your name on the record. Jessica Groves. And scoot your chair up there a little bit if you would. I would ask you to speak up to the court reporter. Jessica, did you and you only cause the death of your son, Dylan Groves? Yes. Did Daniel Groves participate in the killing of Dylan? Dylan? No. Was Daniel Groves aware of any of the injuries that you called Dylan that may have led to his death? No. Did you hide all injuries that you caused Dylan from your husband? Yes. Sustain, rephrase your questions. Are we approach, Your Honor? Uh, on that issue, you need to approach. Just rephrase your question. Jessica Groves, did you only assist in the placement of Dylan's body after his death? Sustain, rephrase your question, Mr. Stratton. No leading. I have a second, Your Honor. You may. Jessica Groves, the injuries that Dylan sustained happened on what date? March 27th. Dylan died on what date? March 28th. As she previously testified, Patricia Kraft said that she had looked at Dylan. Did she do anything else? Objection. Leading. Your Honor, did Patricia Kraft do anything else to examine no. Dylan? Where did you take Dylan after he died? He was at our house for a couple days. And then where did you take him? To the well. Did you murder Dylan Jackson. Groves? Did you murder Dylan Groves? No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Stratton, Ms. Scott, do you wish to cross-examine the witness? Not at this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Does the state wish to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Hutchinson, you may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you need this all Probably. <laughs> Tell the jury 
how you killed this baby? It was an accident. Not your excuse. How did you murder this baby? How did you cause these injuries? I have sit here and admitted. Answer the question, please. How did you cause these injuries? It was an accident. Not your excuse for what happened. How did you cause these injuries? How did you cause those rib fractures? By dropping him. By dropping him. How did you cause this, that first two inch skull fracture? I don't remember. How did you cause that one inch skull fracture? It had to be from dropping him. How did you cause that complete upper arm fracture? Nothing that I ever did was intentional. I'm not asking for your excuse. How did you cause that complete upper arm fracture? Tell the jury. I have to live with this for the rest of Answer my the life. Question. How did you cause that complete You have devoured Ma my family. Ms. Rose. Ms. Rose. You answer the questions that are asked of you. You understand. I've admitted to my guilt. How did you? And I have to live without you, my children. I'm you. done talking to you. You are talking to me because you're sitting on the witness stand. Tell them how you caused that injury. Judge, I ask you to instruct the witness to answer the question. Ms. Rose. By testifying, you're subject to cross-examination. You have to answer the questions on cross-examination that are relevant to these proceedings. This question is a relevant question. You will answer the question at this time. the jury how you caused that complete upper arm fracture. I don't remember. You don't remember? No, I don't. You remember the day those, you said the injuries were caused on the 27th, and he died on the 28th, so you remember all that detail, but you don't remember how you caused that upper arm fracture. No, I don't. Tell the jury why you wrote on your calendar on April 24th, worst day ever when Daniel was taken, but there was no entry about the worst day ever when you killed that baby. I didn't kill my baby. It you was didn't? an accident. How did you cause those injuries? I don't remember. Then how do you remember it was an accident? Because I would never hurt my children intentionally. Never. How did you cause those injuries? I don't remember. I done told you that. And the worst day ever, the day that I lost my last child. Both of my children. Look at this photograph, Jessica Gross. How do you not remember that? Tell the jury how it's possible that you would not remember doing that, if in fact you did it. Ma'am, tell the jury how you would not remember that. Because my mind wasn't clear. Why? Because of drugs. Are you telling this jury that all of these injuries occurred at one time, <coughs> in one incident? No. How many times did you attack baby Dylan? I never attacked him. Then how many accidents did you have, Jessica Groves? I don't remember. Tell them what the accidents were.
You keep asking me the same questions and because you you're get not the answering same the answers. question, ma'am. I told you I don't remember. When was it that your husband realized you were pregnant? Wait a minute. When was it you realized you were pregnant? Probably when I was about five and a half months. Which was when? What month? October. When was it your husband knew you were pregnant? Toward the end of October, beginning of November. How is it your husband didn't know you were <coughs> doped up the whole time you were pregnant? Because I kept it a secret. Why did you tell your why did you guys tell your son that a dream catcher hurt that baby? Because it did. Tell the jury about that. You said you didn't remember. <coughs> tell the jury what you what happened with that dream catcher. I didn't think that dream catcher had injuries to that extent. So that accident didn't cause his death. No. Tell him what accident did. I don't remember. Why didn't you tell Jody Conkle there were all these accidents that killed my baby? Because I was scared. Of what? Everything. What's everything? You were scared of what? Of admitting the truth. Well, tell the jury what the truth is. I you didn't tell Detective Conkle what the truth was. You didn't tell your son what the truth was. Tell this jury what the truth is. I don't remember at all. Why didn't you tell your sister Stacy Hall what the truth was? You told her this had nothing to do with drugs. I swear, nothing, Stacy. I would tell you. Me and Stacy did not grow up together. Me and Stacy has not had a lot of communication over my four years. Ma'am, why didn't you tell Stacy the truth? That's the question. Why would I? Why wouldn't you? I've never had any family support over my forty my years. Sister, ma why didn't you tell Stacy the truth? Why would I? Don't ask me questions. Me and her is not question. that close. She is a half sister okay. that we have never had that close relationship. So, but so you lied to her. Yes, I did. And you lied to your son. Yes, I did. And you lied to Detective Conkle. Yes, I did. But you want this jury to believe you just don't remember and you're not lying to them. Look at these ladies and gentlemen and tell them. <laughs> I can't tell you something that I can't remember. Who I wrapped this never... baby's body in six layers of plastic and duct tape? Who did that? I did. You did. Daniel Groves didn't help you with that? <laughs> yes, he did. Tell him what happened. Tell him about that concealment. I wanted to be able to go back and get my baby. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm not asking you for comments. Tell the jury about the day you wrapped that baby in plastic. Tell them what happened. I don't quite remember it all. You don't remember that either. I know it happened. I remember bits and pieces, but no, I don't remember. Because when he died, part of me died. <laughs> I've just been on autopilot. Ma'am, look at this picture. I don't. Look at the exhibit number of the Forty-five, Your Honor. <laughs> Where did you get all that stuff to wrap the baby Dylan in? Outside, I guess. You guess. No, I'm asking you for real. Where'd you get all this stuff? 
a shirt and get it out from under the kitchen sink. Are you gonna answer the question? Outside. <clears throat> you don't remember this chain, those six layers of plastic and duct tape? Three padlocks, 12 zip ties, eight wire ties, 18 rocks. You don't remember that? Not in detail, no I don't. That's not a whole heck of a lot of planning? No. Why would you do that if you didn't murder this baby on purpose? Because I was scared. Scared of what? Losing everything. Now why are you here telling this jury the story today? No. She needs to allow her time to answer the question. She's not answering the question. Okay. Both rules. Just let you make sure you don't talk over each other. Yes, Sean. That's your next question. <clears throat> I want you to explain to the jury this process up here. I can't. Why? because I don't recall. Who drove baby Dylan out to that well? We both did. Tell the jury how that happened and what you did. We took him out to the well. How'd you get there? On the four-wheeler. And then what? We put him in the well. Then we sit in the field and cried. Why is it that when we watch this video of you and your husband at the sheriff's office, there's not all this crying? I'm, I'm so worried about the dogs. Is that what you said? I was in shock. I've been in shock. I've never got a chance to grieve the death of my baby. Judge, I have additional questions, but I'm not going to ask them. <clears throat> Mr. Stratton, any redirect? Jessica, everything you're saying today is the truth. Yes. You're finally coming clean, correct? Yes, I am. Nature of the objection. He's leading the witness again. Rephrase your question, Mr. Sheriff. Is there anything that the prosecutor has said you did not do? I did not kill my baby intentionally. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Ms. Scott, any cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor, a few questions. Ms. Groves, I know that you're claiming that you don't remember the, a lot of the details um, in this situation. However, do you recall whether or not Daniel Groves participated in the actions that caused D Dylan's death? No, he did not. Okay. Um, did he in any way cause Dylan's death? No. Did the dream catcher falling on the baby 
caused some bruising on Dylan's head? Slightly. Okay. Is that what we heard Daniel Jr. testify to yesterday? Yes. Was there a laceration as a result of that bruising? No. Did that result in his death in any way? No. Originally, you were scared of admitting the truth, correct? Yes. You're admitting to that truth during the course of this trial? Yes, I am. And the truth includes that Daniel Groves did not participate in Dylan's death, correct? Correct. You lied to many people in this case, correct? Yes, I have. Ms. Hutchinson asked you if you lied to your sister. You did? Yes. Mr. Ms. Hutchinson asked if you lied to your son. You did? Yes. Did you also lie to your husband? Yes. You're trying to set the record straight through this trial, correct? Yes, I am. The only part that Dylan, or I'm sorry, the only part that Daniel Groves participated in was helping you to dispose of Dylan's body and place his body in the well after he was deceased, correct? Yep. He was not aware of any of your actions that caused baby Dylan to pass away, correct? No, he was not. Did he help you hide those actions? Yes. But only by disposing of the body after Dylan had already passed away, correct? Yes. You both took great care to wrap his body in plastic? Yes, we did. And that was for the purpose of maybe retrieving his body at a later time, correct? Yes. Did Daniel in any way, or Daniel did not in any way, know of any of your activity that caused a skull fracture that had healed on a prior occasion, did he? No, he did not. When that injury occurred, there was no outward signs of a cut, was there? No, there was not. In regards to the rib fractures that he received that we heard about that were healing, were there any outward signs that Daniel would have been aware of to show that that injury had happened? No, there was not. Okay. And it is correct that baby Dylan passed away on March the 28th. Correct. You and you alone were the one that caused the death of the baby Dylan. Yes, I was. There was nothing that Daniel did that caused his death, correct? Correct. There was nothing that he did that hid your actions other than helping you to assist him or assist you in hiding the baby after he had passed away, correct? Correct. Thank you. I have no further questions at this time. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Any recross by the state? Yes, Your Honor. How is it that 
did your son saw this baby's head swollen and black, but your husband didn't? Look at the jury. Explain that to them. I can't explain that to him because... Because what? I don't know. You don't know. You seem to know a lot of answers to Ms. Scott's question. Answer the question to the jury. How did your 15-year-old son see these injuries, know about them, but your husband didn't? Ms. Burroughs? I don't know. Thank you, Ms. Hutchinson. Ma'am, you may step down. Have a seat at council table. You may call your next witness. Your Honor, at this time, the defense rests. Defendant Jessica Groves has rested their presentation of evidence. Ms. Scott, are you ready to proceed with your presentation? I am, Your Honor. You may call your first witness. Your Honor, at this time, I would call Daniel Groves to the stand. United States of America. This call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. You may begin speaking now. Hello? I don't understand. They have everything screwed up, Stacy. I can't discuss anything. But it's so wrong. So wrong. You know I would never ever hurt my children. You wouldn't. And you wouldn't either. Oh, somebody did, and who did? Accidents happen. And you shouldn't have been the right thing. And mistakes get made. I've been so distraught. I'm just falling apart. So I didn't have to do a big call. She could have messaged me. I didn't have no way. I haven't had no phone. I haven't had nothing. I have nobody. You knew I would have been there. You knew I would have. I don't know anybody's phone number. Aunt Linda won't accept my phone calls. All I have is Daniel, and he is stuck in here, too. I don't know what to do. You should have been honest with me from the start. I had no help. I can't help when I don't know. Oh, my God. I don't know what to do. I don't think there's anything that you can do. There's not. But I did not do this. We did not do this. But everything points that you did. I did. Everything looks different than it seems. If you're not there, you don't know. They're making me out to be a monster, and I am not. I <laughs> know you're not. Neither is Daniel. But I didn't want her to see Stacy, it was not because of that. That had nothing to do with it. Nothing. I swear to you, nothing. Nothing. One day I will explain it to you, I swear. But they had nothing, nothing to do with it. I promise you with 
all of this in me, nor my children, nothing. Do you guys have anything in my sister? Of what? Anything. That was the one from him, from us. No! Did you buy anything from anybody? No! Like what? I didn't know you had anything stolen from you. Oh, like stuff? If I did, I would give it to you. Because I know how much that would mean to you. Because I know now everything that was at my house, everything that I have left of my children, my mother, Daniel's mother is gone. They destroyed my house. I'm sure everything in it that is worth anything is gone. Sure, yeah, I'm sure they did it. I have nothing left. Nothing. I'm going to make sure that Dylan gets the funeral. They were supposed to have a visit or a lighted vigil or something last night that. I don't know. That doesn't really help, does it? No, it don't. Daniel's sister or somebody, I don't know who, was supposed to start a GoFundMe account. But I can't read anymore. <laughs> Hutchinson's going to review something for briefly before we continue. If there's nothing uh, we need to address, then you can go ahead and proceed. I think we're okay. Thank you. I saw one thing that I can only imagine. I don't even want to see it. I don't even know that I love you. I never turned my back on you. I love you too. Just 
want to kiss Daniel, little Daniel, so much and hold him because he's always going to be my baby, no matter how big he gets, even though he's bigger than me. And I haven't talked to him for so long. He probably don't even want to talk to me. He doesn't want to see you like that. And here. He I know. He's such a good boy. I'm so worried about him. He's good. I will be in his life. He's good. Well, he's with Stella. I just, he's good. You've seen him? I haven't seen him. But I will. I can't now. I can't right now. But I will, and I will be in his life. Well, I don't know Phyllis's number. I got Linda's number, but she won't accept my calls. I expect that. Phyllis is not going to accept your calls either. No, but just recently I found out he has a girlfriend. But it's not a girl from around here. It's a girl he met on the line. She supposedly lives in Arkansas. He tells her he loves her. He wants to marry her. And I'm so scared that it's a predator. Because I don't know. And I don't want him to be mad at me because this girl sent me text on his phone before it was turned off. She seems legit. She seems like a, a teenage girl. And it's somebody that he has to talk to. So I hope that it is somebody that is actually who they say they are. But I'm so worried that it's not. He's going to need a lot of people to talk to. He's such a good boy. I know he's a good boy. I've been told he's a good boy. And he's so smart. I don't know where he gets it. I really don't. And I know you're a good person. I know you are. Not many people do. But I know. <laughs> How are you going to find out if you are? letter or anything. They did let me see him because he was cooperative with them. <laughs> he did. Because they threatened him with murder. And you got it anyway. And got it anyway. I would never, Daniel would never, ever hurt our children. I would never hurt our children. When you're high, you don't know what you do. That had nothing to do with it. I swear to you. I swear. If it had anything, any, if there was even an inkling that it had anything to do with it, I swear I would tell you. I promise you. That had absolutely nothing to do with it. Nothing. <laughs> Look in my eyes. In my soul. I'm telling you, nothing to do with it. I promise you. I'm getting death threats in here already. They holler through the door and call me names and tell me just to hang myself because if not, they're going to take care of it for me. They wouldn't even give me a blanket. They haven't given me 
soap. They won't let me take a shower. I finally took a shower, I don't even know, yesterday or the day before, which is water. And I stood there until I dripped dry and put back all my dirty, filthy, nest stinky clothes. And then finally today, some other girl slid me soap and shampoo under the door so that I could take a shower because I felt nasty. I still feel nasty, but at least I did get a little bit of soap. They wouldn't even give me a spoon to eat with for like four days. You don't have to be suicidal in this place because this place will kill you, literally. But I promise you, don't believe what they're saying. How do you get there? I can't discuss anything. <laughs> Everything that me and you have said, they're listening to everything. And they're going to take everything they can from me and run and try to bury me alive. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to fight it. We've got to because we did not do this. I promise you, accidents happen and people make mistakes. Yes, we've done some things wrong, but nothing like this, nothing. I promise you. I never expected to get a visit. Of course I would. I was hoping that you could come and see me. I didn't know that you would. But I was hoping you would, and I didn't know your phone number. I only had two phone calls. And I tried calling Aunt Linda, and she rejected my calls. I don't know exactly why, but it is what it is, I reckon. I don't know if anybody's been talking here, I know. I don't have the support that I should, and you never have. No, I have. I know that. But I was always there. I know. I was always there. But I don't know where you live. I don't know. I don't know anybody's phone number. Don't have internet and in, well, haven't had it for quite a while. So I've just kind of, it's just been me and Daniel. We are all we have. No matter what, in him or forever, it's till death do you part. Do the good and the bad. And I know you know that because I know you didn't have the perfect marriage. Nobody does. Everybody has their problems. And you work through them. And you love each other forever, no matter what. And I'm so sorry for you for that. 